I have been having so much fun with my Sizzix Eclipse machine using the eCal software and print to cut Now, I got this digital artwork file from Allison Strine, and I just absolutely love this artwork, and I knew print to cut was going to be the perfect way to be able to cut out these cool birds and leaving this cool little shadow around them. So this is a tutorial showing you how I did it. Okay, I have my eCal software open, and I'm going to go right up here to this image button, and then I'm going to browse for the image that I want to use for print to cut. So in my case, I've put it on my desktop. It's called Bird Shoes, and I'll open it up. Now what you're going to see over here is you'll see the image itself in full color, the way that I want it to print. And then over here, you're going to see a preview of the trace lines, the cut lines that eCal software has done. So it has automatically traced this image, both sort of inside and out, and has determined that these are all the cut lines that you would need to cut out this image if you wanted it extremely detailed, which we do not. We really just want the outline. Now, as I look at this outline, it's pretty smooth. There's not really a lot of jagged edges, and there's not a lot of breaks in it. So that's really my main look here at this. Um, not so much all the stuff on the inside, because I'm going to delete it all anyway. Um, but one thing that you can do if you've got too much detail is you can lower this detail level really low. Hit Preview and see how it took a lot of that extra stuff out. Now I want an image layer because I'm doing print to cut, so I ha do have to make sure that I've checked there where it says add image layer, and then I'll hit OK. Now it's going to go to my mat and it's got my image layer in there, and if I go to window layers, we can see everything we've got here. Let's click this little triangle and then you'll see that there's a cut layer and there is a print layer. Now the print layer is uh, viewable right now, and if I click the little eyeball then it goes away, and if I highlight cut, you might be wondering, well, why can't I see any of those cut lines? Well, it's just because the stroke over here is set to none. So if I just set that to color, now see that they show up on the screen. Now let's zoom in a little bit so you can see what that looks like. All right, so what that cut is is just a series of a whole bunch of different cut lines that are all grouped together to make all these cuts. And what I want to do is have a little outline of my bird and a little bit outside of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Object, add shadow layer and you'll see what happens. The gray is the new shadow layer and see how it just went outside of my outer cut just a little bit and it also did that inside anything that was big enough to add an interior one it did but I'm not worried about that I'm gonna get rid of those. Now I can slide this slider to decide how big of a shadow or small I want one. Uh, it defaults to one, which is usually a pretty nice uh, shadow. So maybe maybe one, maybe let's do one and a quarter. Give us, oops, not 125, that'd be giant. 1.25, and we'll hit OK. Now, here is my new shadow layer. You can see it here in the layers palette. I still have that old cut layer, and now I really don't need it because I've made a new one, and it's the shadow layer. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this little trash can and get rid of my cut layer. Now watch what happens over here. All the red lines are going to disappear. Still have my print layer. I just have it turned off. And then I've got this shadow layer. Now, I really just want the outline. I don't want all this extra little stuff on the inside. So I am going to have to break this apart and get rid of all those extra pieces. So with this highlighted, I'm going to go up here to Object, Break Apart. And then now if I look on the layers, and I use a little triangle, you can see that what that shadow layer is is a whole series of individual pieces and parts. And I could either go in and delete those all, but do, 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 or I can go down here to the one that's the one I want to keep, which is this one. And I think what I'll do is I'll just turn that one off. And let me just turn off my other layers too. So everything that's, that's viewable right now on the screen is something that I want to get rid of. Now I'm going to hit Command F, that zooms me out, and then I'll just go ahead and grab all this stuff with one shot and get rid of it. Okay, now let's go back to our layer, and you'll see I can turn this stuff back on. Now I've got just my outline layer, and then I've got my print layer. So I typically, let's well, let's just zoom in real quick and make sure we don't have any weird spots or shards. This little area up here doesn't exactly thrill me, but it'll be okay. Uh, let me just command F. Okay, let's take a look down at the bottom here. See now, I see I have a shard right there. So let's go ahead and turn off the print layer. And I'm only going to look here at the shadow layer. And I'm going to go up here to this little node tool. And it's going to show all the little nodes. 
fact, let's get in even a little bit tighter. So let's go to the node tool and I can see right here I have this weird little jutting out node. So I'm just going to click that, highlight it, hit my delete key. I'll get rid of that one. And you could have also just gone in and done like a smoothing with the path smooth tool, but I only have a few. So I'm just going to use my little hand and I'm just going to travel around the outside looking for those little shards. And it's not looking, well, see now, since I'm up here at the top, maybe I will just go ahead and fix this. Let's get rid of one in the middle. Maybe we'll get rid of this one too. Okay, that's much better. All right, let's command F and we'll un go back to our thing so we can look at the whole thing. How's it looking? It looks pretty smooth. I think that the cutter's gonna like that. Command F goes out to my full thing. Okay, so let's turn this all stuff back on. And then now what I like to do just makes it easier for me to remember everything stacked in the right order is I just go ahead and throw that shadow layer there in my stack, in my little bird shoe stack. That's going to all keep it together so that I can't accidentally move one and not move the other. And then if you really want to know what you're doing, if you're planning on saving this and using it in the future, you can double click this if you want. Instead of calling it shadow layer, let's go ahead and call it cut. Cool. Now you know you got your cut and your print. And really, you don't even need that up there anymore. So I'm going to hit the little trash can, do a little house cleaning here. And now I've got my little bird shoes. I've got my cut and my print. Okay, let's go back to our cut layer again. First things first is you notice that it's got all that gray filled in. I don't really like that, so I'm going to hit none. And then let's go in a little bit tighter here. So now you really get an idea of how this is going to look. Don't worry at all about that outer bounding box. It's not going to print that. It will just print all the color stuff on the inside. But with the stroke line being set on that cut layer, see how it's set to gray? It will print that gray. So if you don't want to see your stroke line in your printout, then you do want to come over here and hit none. Okay, so it's going to disappear, but it's still there. And one other little thing to check is on my cut layer, does it say cut? Yes, it does. Perfect. Okay, we are ready for print to cut. In fact, I can even just delete or turn that off. Let's command F. And then now what I can do if I want to is I can move this whole entire, oops, sorry, move this whole entire thing maybe up a little bit. And then I will hit the print to cut button. Now it kind of walks you through it, which is sort of nice. And you can kind of set your materials here and all that. But the main thing to know is that where you print for print to cut is here in the print to cut dialog. Let me cancel this for a second. If you go to file print, you will be able to print this, but it will not put the registration marks on it for you. And so then that, you're not able to do print to cut. So you don't want to do the file print. If you're doing print to cut, you've got to do the print to cut button. And then you use this little print button right down here. So I'll hit print and it's going to bring up whatever uh, printers that you have on your machine, you know, and then you can do all your printer settings and then you just hit print. Okay, so that's busy printing. And then once I've got that printed, then I'm going to load it onto my cutting mat and put it in my Eclipse machine. So I will do that. Okay, now once I've got my mat loaded and I've set my material and all that kind of stuff, then I hit next. Now what it does is it, you may have heard that, it has moved my little laser line. It's turned my laser on on my Eclipse and it's actually moved it over to where it thinks the first registration mark is for my drawing. And it's kind of walking you through right here what to do. And you just nudge with um, your buttons. I, you can either use these or I often just use my arrow keys. And I just nudge that laser until it gets, you can kind of see me nudging it, right over the top of the registration mark. Once it is, then I hit next. It's going to zoom down to the other registration mark, and it's going to get pretty close, but then you'll still have to nudge it a little bit to get it in the right place. And notice that it, it told me where my first registration mark was. That's not important to us other than just to notice that it did put that on there. And then I would hit cut after I've got my second registration mark on, and then I will go ahead and start cutting out my image. After I've cut it out, I've got that perfect bird with that cool little shadow layer and I am ready to put this on a project.